All right. So I'm recording now, so hopefully you'll have this for an in in posterity, right? So you'll have it forever. Um, so again, I'm Chad Boninger. I'm the business librarian, and um, you all are my uh, third uh, virtual um, cluster meeting today, um, where I talk about uh, databases and stare at smiley faces in, in a little circle. So this is a, a little bit of fun. Can do it. So, so. <laughs> The um, <clears throat> all right, so I'm going to share my screen with you, and I know um, you all are all doing some variations of the um, of the entertainment. Uh, you you've got a business concept somewhere in the realm of entertainment in some in some capacity. Okay, so the first thing I want to tell you is, even though if you're not doing a movie theater, I would still encourage you to use my movie theaters guide because the same kind of progression and steps and data will apply to what you're working on. OK, so um, I'm going to do an entertainment idea. And uh, so my entertainment idea is uh, just to kind of give you an example. I don't know if you've seen on TikTok or Instagram or whatever uh, if um, or if it kind of comes up in your feed, but but roller skating and inline skating is is back. And, and um, even The New York Times says it's the summer of roller skates. OK. Um, so, uh, you know, it's one of those activities that you can do in solo uh, with uh, with the pandemic. And um, matter of fact, inline skates, roller skates and bicycles were really hard to come by in the early months of the pandemic because people were looking for something to do because they couldn't go to the gym. Right. And they want to do something besides just like run or something. Right. So uh, so the, these bicycles, inline skates and roller skates were pretty hot. Now, I do want to tell you that uh, yours truly, your librarian, was way ahead of the curve because I brought inline skating back in like September of 2019, baby. OK, so so I truly am, am cutting edge here. OK, so uh, just so you know that uh, uh, I am also uh, an inline skater of, of some capacity, right? This was me in my early beginner, re-beginning days, and I was pretty rusty, but um, so so my project is maybe um, to also should say that there's you know, communities like rollerblading on Reddit and also uh, old skaters, although old skaters is about skateboarding. Uh, these kind of communities are really starting to grow a lot because people are getting back into uh, these kind of activities. So my logic is. Someone muted me, sorry about that. Yeah, um, I lost you. So um, my logic is that when the pandemic is over, or maybe even on the, if we can do it in a safe capacity, that people are going to need a new place to skate. Okay, so we're going to bring back the roller rink. Okay, so so my project that I'm going to do is some sort of like business concept for my examples for y'all will be like a roller rink or skating rink or, or something like that. Okay. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, let me close out some of these uh, these silly things here. The first thing I'm going to start with is I'm going to go and look at my consumers and customers tab. OK, I'm going to show you four databases, one of which I showed you a little bit last time. Uh, I'm going to show you four databases today. They are Simmons, uh, Simply Analytics, BizMiner and Merged Intellect. OK, so I'm going to show you four different databases today that we, um, uh, one of which we went over just a little bit last time, but the other three we haven't really covered much at all. Uh, you've seen them in my tutorial when we took my tutorial, but um, I'm going to show you show these to you in, in the in the concept of looking at a more of an entertainment kind of business sector. Okay, so we'll go into uh, Simmons Insights here first. And we will proceed to get in. And when we first used this uh, back in the project one days, let me close out of this. Um, we were looking at the quick reports tab. OK, so uh, we have two access to two components inside of Simmons here. We have the cross tab and the quick reports. OK, the geo mapping feature we don't have so, but we will we'll use simply analytics to, to map things. OK, um, so we're going to start off with just using the quick reports under essentials here. And we can start off, and this is just a basic search here. We'll search for skating. And you can see it brings up things about do you watch figure skating? We don't really want that stuff. We want the underneath the entertainment and leisure category here. 
we can find things like, and I'm going to um, shrink this a little bit, okay, and I'll blow it up once we get to the, our, 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 another search here. So if we shrink this a little bit, uh, we can now see people who say that they do uh, ice skating every chance they get or inline skating every chance they get. That's not the person I'm after. That's not the consumer I'm after in, in my in my uh, business concept. I want the people who um, have uh, are, are somewhat interested in it or just or have um, or have participated in it in the last 12 months. Okay, so we'll do. Have you done any sort of inline skating or roller skating in the last 12 months? We'll choose that. Okay, and then we will go over here and use this as our target consumer. So we have to move it down here before we can do anything with it. Move that to target. And we see we have 558 people out of the whole survey of about 13,000 people who said, yes, I have inline skated or roller skated in the last 12 months. Okay. Now, first of all, this data is coming from 2017. Okay. 2017 data. It was published by Simmons in 2018. And you're probably like, well, Chad, uh, I need 2020 data. Well, the 2020 data doesn't exist yet. Okay. It will exist for a commercial clients of Simmons, people in the corporate world, uh, in the year 2021. Like the survey is going on like right now. And they will they will aggregate all the information and publish it in sometime in spring to summer of 2021. Okay. Uh, for our purposes, because we're an academic subscriber to Simmons, uh, our data is two years behind what the corporate clients get. That's why we get an academic rate. So, so in 2021, we'll have access to the uh, uh, 2019 data, right? For example. Okay. So, uh, so that's that's where we're at there. Okay. Um, so 2017 is about as good as we get. If you think this number is a little bit small, one thing you can do is change this from the six-month study to the 12-month study. All right. And that will almost double your sample size. Okay. So that gives you more people to look at. Okay. So if we do that, and then once we have our target down here, the arrow lights up, we can run our analysis. And this is going to give us basic demographic profiles of people who said that they uh, skated or uh, roller skated or inline skated in the last 12 months. Okay. So, so we can use that kind of data. All right. Now, let's say I wanted to. Um, also at my skating rink, I wanted to have some pool tables and maybe some, uh, I want to have a bowling alley, that kind of stuff. If we wanted to to make this kind of a family, you know, Chad's family fun center or whatever, um, we could go up here and search for bowling and get another uh, consumer profile, demographic profile there as well. But I'm going to show you a, a kind of a more advanced and probably a, a quicker way to get more granular level data using the cross tab feature, okay? So if we click on cross tab here, <clears throat> this is the opening screen when you first get to Simmons by default. Um, it's usually, I usually use it for the second part of the search because it's a little bit more advanced than the demographic profile. Now you can go in here and say type in skating, for example, and we get the same sort of information here. But what I'm going to do is show you a different way to actually search this through a browsing feature. And I like to click on the dictionary search up here in the top right hand corner. Okay. And this kind of opens up a big menu and this is kind of a this is Chad's old school way of doing it because this is the way the old Simmons used to work and this is kind of my preference for using it this way. So if we scroll down here we see there's entertainment leisure and maybe we want to see there's leisure activities and hobbies what kind of things you do uh, leisure activities hobbies the last 12 months and let's see if there's anything good in here that might be good for Chad's uh, family fun center with skating and pool tables. Oh, look, there's go-karting. Well, let's drag go-karting over here to a column. All right, I'm going to build a big table with columns and rows, okay? And if we go down to uh, sports and fitness, played, participate in the last 12 months, here's our billiards and pool. All right, here's our, what else can we find in here? Um, Here's our inline skating and roller skating. And we can grab ice skating just for just for good measure there. OK, so we've got some activities across the top there. Now we need some demographics or stuff along our rows to measure against. If you scroll back up over here, you can see that there are uh, the demographics uh, drop down menu here. where We can go in and look at demographics, personal information, and we can say, all right, so what percentage of these people who do these activities are male? Uh, what percentage are female? You can even go in and say of what age are they? 
And if we scroll on down here, here we have 18 to 34. And maybe we'll get people who are. Um, I am in about halfway between this category here, so I'm not uh, I'm right in the middle of that one there. OK, so you can do that kind of stuff. If you wanted to you go up here and click your arrow to run your cross tab. OK, now I do want to show you. Let's say we're also interested in looking at, um, you know, all these all these, um, you know, TikToks and Instagrams and all that kind of stuff that we've been seeing of people skating. A, a large percentage of them, at least on social media, are female. OK, and they typically tend to be younger females. OK, so what I want to do is see what market research says about that. OK, so I'll go up here and grab 18 to 34 to get the get the young age group. And then I'm going to make a custom variable here for like basically millennial women. OK, if I do gender. And change this to female. I can now call this. Um, millennial women and I can never spell that right. It's like it's almost like entrepreneur. I can never spell entrepreneur or Cincinnati of all things, you know, so. Um, so you'll see right now. Uh, this box is red. It's not happy. It's not a happy box. OK, to make it a happy box, we have to compare or we have to connect the age with the female. OK, so what we want is people who said when they clicked out the survey, yes, I am age 18 to 34 and I'm female. OK, and so if we want to do that, we put an and clicking on and between there and now it's a happy box. It's a green box. OK. So if we go over here and then click on the move to rows. We now have the millennial women, uh, the category or the 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 uh, variable that we just created custom variable there uh, right there as well. OK, so um, so pretty cool stuff there. Now you can also you know right now we just have demographics in here. We could go in and do things like. Um, let's see. Then. Um, Trying to think of a, a good example here for you. Um, let's just actually let's do. Yeah, let's search for video games right here. Let's say I want to have an arcade at my. Uh, um, Chad's. Um, um, Chad's fun house or whatever, right? OK, so here we have uh, lifestyle statements, video games, any agree video games are my main source of entertainment. Um, Let's see. So we'll just we'll just grab that one there and put them down here. OK, so we don't necessarily have to have just demographics down there. We can have basically anything that 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 talks about, you know, any any sort of statement or any sort of a variable we can we can cross tab in here, which is really pretty cool. If you wanted to only serve frosted flakes for your snack at your at Chad's, you know, skating fun house or whatever, we could put frosted flakes down here and see what percentage of people who said they skate eat frosted flakes of all things, you know, so something silly like that. OK, so we'll go up here and run our cross tab. Now what this is going to give us is um, I'm going to blow this up a little bit so we can see this on our screens. <clears throat> if we this is our total population here, OK, the total population of the survey. OK, so I'm going to um, and this is kind of interesting to look at. So if you said uh, of the total population, 7.8% uh, agree that um, video games are the main source of entertainment. OK, so that's how you read that from a vertical standpoint. I usually almost always use the vertical standpoint. Um, let's go over and see. Uh, here we go. Um, of those who played pool or billiards in the last 12 months using the vertical percent percent, 65% were male, 34%, 0.9% were female, 45% uh, were 18 to 34, 35% uh, were 35 to 54, 13.1% uh, uh, played, had said video games are their main source of entertainment. Okay. And that is comparing that to what was the national average? 7.8%. Um, okay. So people who play pool looks like they're more likely to play video games as well. OK. If we go over here and look at our inline skating of those people who said that they uh, did inline skating or roller skating the last 12 months, 25 percent of them were millennial female. OK, which is pretty cool. All right. So uh, you can. Oh, sorry, I went 
crazy here on us. Um, you can also go and do it this way. You can do the horizontal, okay? Of, of millennial women, 9.7% of them said that they inline skated or roller skated in the last 12 months, okay? So that's kind of how you use this to kind of tell your story, okay? Now, what you need to do beyond this is then go into your local market to try to figure out, all right, so uh, what percentage of my local market really is interested in skating, okay? Or interested in playing billiards or pool, okay? Or like to play video games, or what percentage of my local market are in the 18 to 34 year old, year old age range, okay? And for that, we're gonna use a database called Simply Analytics. Simply Analytics is under the local industry and market uh, section here on my guide. And these are alphabetical, so it's down at the bottom here. And so we'll open that up in a new tab. And Simply Analytics, uh, the way it works, um, you don't have to do this. You can sign in as a guest if you want, but I would encourage you to use this link here to create an account. Just use your Ohio email address and whatever password to create an account. Uh, don't try to log in with just your Ohio ID and your password because it won't work for you. Um, what creating an account does for you is it will remember what you were working on last time, which is a, a pretty good thing because sometimes some of the searches you do inside of Simply Analytics are can be a little bit complicated. Okay, um, the um, I've had multiple you know different searches that that I've saved over time. They've gone back to that's it's been a kind of a, kind of a good thing to do that. Um, one thing about Simply Analytics is we typically only have 10 simultaneous users across the whole university. Um, that's as far as our, our checkbook will go, and that's pretty expensive at 10 users, uh, believe me. Um, but uh, the, the vendor has been uh, nice enough to, to give us uh, an additional 40 users for a total of 50 users uh, through almost to Thanksgiving or so. So, there, so we're, we're well equipped, hopefully, to handle most of the cluster need. Okay. Um, you can see I was doing this search earlier from my earlier class. I want, to, I want to kind of walk you from the start how you can set this search up. So when you do, when you first arrive at Simply Analytics, you, you have the opportunity to create a new project. And so I will do, um, let's say I want to look at Cleveland. And we'll do Cleveland, Oklahoma, Cleveland, Ohio there. And then we will also do um, uh, Cuyahoga County. And we can also compare it to the state. If I knew a zip code in, in Cleveland, I could also do a zip code, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. So once you're satisfied there, um, you click next and it will give you the opportunity to, to get some seed variables, okay? I typically look at population. I typically look at the uh, household income sometimes. Um, unless I'm doing a home improvement project, I usually typically don't care about how old the housing, you know, uh, their houses are or whatnot, okay? So we'll start there. And you create the seed variables so you won't have, you know, you'll have something to work with initially, You're not just staring at a blank screen or in this case, a blank map, okay? It immediately launches you into the map section. I actually prefer to start at the top looking at our comparison table, okay? So here we have the table we've built. We've got Cuyahoga, you know, Cleveland versus Cuyahoga County versus Ohio. We can move these around, you know, however we want to there. Um, Let's add some more data to it, okay? So if we go in and let's search for skating. This is probably looking pretty familiar. Um, this is the same kind of variables that we saw over here in Simmons with, with these other variables, okay? Um, you can see we can limit this to entertainment and leisure once again. And then here's people who, the number of people who participated in ice skating, let's do that and just click on them to add them to my list. Percentage. And here's number of people who did inline roller skating or uh, the percent, a number. Uh, you can also see here's the every chance I get folks. Those are people who like, you know, if it's sunny outside, I'm going to go skate right now, right? Or not necessarily ice skating, but roller skating uh, and inline skating. We'll just, we'll just choose these for the time being. You can also see that this, once you search something, you can click on the, uh, the header at the top and that will take you uh, inside of the folder where this information comes from inside the database. And you can see this is laid out just like what we saw in, in Simmons Insights because it's the same data. It's just presented in a different way here in Simply Analytics. So if we go through and say, well, here's our leisure activities and hobbies, leisure activities last 12 months. Um, you can see here is our, uh, if we scroll down, 
Here's our number who've done go karting, right? If we go down and look at our uh, sports interests, participated the last 12 months. Let's see. Um, here is our bowling. Here's our billiards and pool. All right. And once we do that, we're adding things to our to our comparison, right? So here we see um, uh, in people in Cleveland, uh, and these are all projections, okay? So they didn't they didn't survey everybody in this in the city of Cleveland about this, okay? They're they're using the Simmons data and they're making a mathematical projection on the percentage of people who are likely to to engage in this activity or buy this particular product or whatever uh, in in that particular location, okay? So here we see. Um, the city of Cleveland looks like it's on average with the U.S. 5.01% uh, are projected to have participated in inline or roller skating uh, in the last 12 months, which is this, about the same as the U.S. average. Okay, If this was well below the U.S. average, I'd probably say, no, nah, we're not going to open a skate rink in, in Cleveland. Okay, But because it's average or above average, it's probably, probably pretty good. Okay, Now, if you're doing an app or you're doing some kind of online presence or that kind of thing, um, you may not be doing a physical brick and mortar store, but this kind of information can also tell you like maybe where you want to target your initial advertising, that kind of stuff. If you were going to do uh, put that into your plan, right? Or if you're just looking at, you know, statewide, how many people like to do this particular activity, you know, or even nationally, what's the what's the distribution by location where people are going to be doing this activity or, or engaging with my product or service. OK. If we go over to the uh, quick report. Um, here we see the quick report is basically census level information, which is, you know, uh, economic and social um, uh, information. So if you want to add some of this to your to your your comparison table, maybe we're like going through here and like, you know what? Um, that New York Times article Chad showed me actually mentioned that uh, um, uh, roller skating has in, has particularly been popular among uh, uh, urban black population for quite some time, even before the latest TikTok and Instagram boom, right? So let's add um, black population to our to our list, okay? And if we go down, we can say, well, now we need to add some household incomes. Let's grab um, maybe we saw in our census or our Simmons data that um, you know this was the this household income middle range here was was very likely to, to like skating or, or pool or whatever, we can add that to our list. If we go back to our comparison table, however, we scroll down and the things we just added aren't there. <clears throat> so what you can do is go back up under view and actions, edit your view here, and then go down and grab those you're looking for, okay? While you're in here, you can say, well, I don't really need the whole population. Um, I'm not gonna do anything with ice skating. And uh, go karts are too expensive, so I don't really want to do go kart anymore. And um, bowling takes up too much real estate, so I'm just going to have basically roller skating and pool. Okay, so we'll just do that and then click done. And now we've kind of groomed our uh, table, if you will, uh, to to make it a little more manageable for the the actual data that we need. Okay. Uh, finally, in in Simply Analytics here, you can go over and build a map, and uh, right now we're looking at this uh, by uh, the city of Cleveland and we're looking at by population. Let's change this to something that, that is more of interest to my particular um, uh, business concept. So we'll look at the percentage of people in Cleveland uh, mapped uh, by, in this case, by zip code. OK, uh, we can take this down to census tracts if we want to. Kind of gives you smaller little uh, little tables to look at, or little uh, little squares to look at there. Okay, it's drawing that up for us. You can also go in and edit this thing, right? So if you wanted to and say, well, I'm not really too keen on the OSU color. Let's do something that's a little more, a um, little more, a little more fresh and, and funky, right? You can also go in and uh, edit this if you want to. Um, let's do edit this more and change some of the custom colors as well. So if you have your own logo and your logo's got colors in it for your business concept, you know, for your PowerPoint or whatever, you can make a map that matches your logo colors, which I think would be kind of uh, pretty cool, right? So, um, so uh, let's see here. All right. So um, 
so yes, yeah, so you can make a map with with your you know whatever kind of information you have on there as well. So really, really pretty cool. Uh, it looks like when I went to granular there, let's go back out to zip codes. I got some some blank information there. So you know this kind of gives you a, um, a a neat way to kind of visualize uh, you know where your your company might be located, right? And you can even go and say, well, let's look at it by states. Um, and let's look at uh, USA as a whole, right? You can kind of see this kind of stuff, okay? So, so pretty cool, cool way to do uh, um, that kind of uh, visualization as well, okay? All right. Um, and right now we're looking at per by percentages. If you wanted to, you can change it to the number of people. And obviously it's going to change a little bit because you look at like California, right? More populated um, rather, rather than percentages of people. So we can change that to whatever color and, and go from there. Okay. All right. Uh, from there, um, let's say we want to know a little bit more about the actual industry uh, and um, the local market industry conditions, if you will. Uh, we're going to start with that using a database called Bizmeyer. And when you get here, you can go in and search for your topic by keyword term, okay? My topic does happen to bring up uh, skating rinks, okay? Uh, if yours, if you get like this, res this shows no results or whatever, what you may wanna do is from the search screen, go to all industry search tools and then browse under the arts and recreation section there, okay? Odds are you're going to find something that's pretty close to what you need to do uh, in in some of these industry categories. Okay, so if you clicked on 713 here, for example, um, and then click on um, you know other other amusement and recreation industries, as we do that, we've got all kinds of stuff to choose from. Okay, so here's like um, you know there was there's skating, there's baseball batting cages, trampoline centers, you know. Um, all this kind of stuff, skating rinks, table tennis, AKA ping pong facilities, you know, so, so all this kind of stuff that we can look at. Okay. Uh, for my purposes, I'm going to do uh, skating rinks. And typically I usually use, if I'm doing a local market kind of thing, <clears throat> excuse me, I will use uh, typically two or three reports and I'll show you two of them today. I usually use these three here, the industry market trends report, competitive market narrative, and the industry financial reports, okay? So typically what you'll do is you'll go in and select a market area, and then you'll choose your location. Now, if I was doing grocery stores, we could do grocery stores down to like the, um, the zip code level sometimes, depending on how many grocery stores are in an area, okay? But because there's only 2,106 operations of roller rinks in this database, that's how much they've counted across the US, it's gonna be hard to get down to like a too specific granular level, okay? So if I was doing like um, um, Columbus, you know, Columbus would be okay. But if I was doing, uh, um, I don't know, somewhere in West Virginia, I'd probably do the whole state of West Virginia rather than just like Huntington or Charleston or whatever. Uh, Tennessee, I'd have to do, instead of do, if I was going to do Chattanooga, I'd probably do the whole state rather than, because Chattanooga is not there. Okay, so uh, so we'd, we'd have to look at, you know, a broader um, uh, region. Uh, for our purposes, we'll do uh, Columbus, Ohio, and then we will access that now. BizMiner can be a little sluggish to uh, to load. It's crunching all these numbers in the background, okay? And um, I've actually, what, what these will give you, I've already done this search before. If you click on the little, little um, uh, blue link here, it'll open up. Um, this right here. I've already preloaded it because it takes a few minutes to load. Um, this gives you a lot of information about the local industry and market of that particular industry within that particular region. Uh, to start off with, uh, if you want to look at the map here, the map will give us a map of some of the companies that they are looking at as they put, a, put together this kind of industry uh, snapshot, if you will. Okay, so these are um, uh, various uh, Roller rink and skate companies within uh, the region there. Okay. Uh, one thing you'll notice if you click on uh, some of these uh, companies here, they do give you a sales bracket, but not exactly an estimated sales uh, number. So we're going to show you another place to get that in a few minutes. Okay. 
Um, within some of the tabs here, you've got the market. You see the uh, the total market volume for startups, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, if you don't see that, now this is an example. If we go over here to the startups tab, just as an example, um, there were two startups evidently in 2019 in the, in the area. Okay, um, that surprised me because roller rinks are not really a it's not really a hopping industry, right? Um, but uh, so if there's not any startup information there, you may have to back it off a little bit and look at the state level, look at the national level and try to figure out what market share um, those companies who were startups in that industry, uh, what, what their average uh, sales were and that kind of stuff. OK. So here we have things like you know, annual sales. Uh, we've got uh, you know, there's a COVID impact statement as far as what's happened uh, over the last <coughs> quarter or so. Uh, you can see uh, from May to June was uh, not great, obviously, and things are kind of slowly, if not level, a little climbing out a little bit. OK. You also see a cessation rate, which is basically um, how many or what percentage of the firms went out of business over the over the period of time. So it's a good place to go for uh, to, to understand, you know, how survivable is that particular business, at least in that location. <clears throat> All right, the, uh, the other part uh, that we can look at, if we go back to um, uh, the homepage here and under skating rinks, are these um, local industry financial reports. And once again, we'll look at uh, Cleveland. And um, this is calculating uh, our, our sales bracket range. That way we're comparing, you know, small companies to small companies or big companies to big companies, okay? So um, I'll do the, uh, companies making less than uh, $200,000 a year there. And uh, what this will give us is it's a good place to find information like how much do these companies pay in rent or pay in wages or what's their cost of sales, right? So for me, cost of sales might include things like how much am I paying for my roller skates or my roller skate repair or whatever, right? Um, so again, you can click on the HTML version here once it loads for you. And then um, this is what it looks like. OK, so if you look at your your um, profit and loss statement, here is uh, averages for the area, how much the cost of sales is right or uh, how much they pay in, in salaries. OK, or uh, how much they pay in rent. All right. So if we were looking at this industry wide, uh, this will be in the neighborhood of like one hundred and forty four thousand dollars. Right. But because we're just looking at the smaller um, uh, companies in the in the uh, industry, uh, we're looking at it more of a, on a, a, a smaller basis. Right. So uh, it's a great way to kind of look at it from that standpoint. OK, uh, pre tax net profit. We can kind of see, um, you know, things are kind of rough in the roller skating uh, rink. So you're probably going to do it for love and not for the money. Right. So. Uh, um, you know, it's uh, it's not it's not it's not a it's not a hopping business right now, but uh, anyway, so that will give you good information that you can use to kind of make your judgments about your about your industry and your industry averages and that kind of stuff. All right, so once again, looking at competitors and companies in the area, you know, we could go over here and search for these companies by company name, emergent and select, okay, and that is also in my local industry market tab. Um, we can go in and type in, um, you know, um, let's see. Um, Mentor Skateland one, we could go in and type in that and get company information here. Uh oh, hold on. Whoops, I've been in here so much today. Maybe it's uh, freaking out on me. Let's try that again. All right, that's better. So we could go in here and type in Mentor Skateland one and get information about that company. Um, but we don't really want to do that like a bunch of times. OK, so what I'm going to do is build a list of skate rinks in um, in the area. So I'm going to use the advanced search here in Merge and Select. And I'm going to start at location up here. And I'm going to do the whole metro area. OK, because Cleveland's kind of funny shaped and I want to get more of a broad area there. So we'll do the MSA. And we will go down and click on uh, there's the Cleveland uh, metro area. We'll add that to your criteria. And this says there's approximately 295,000 companies in the database that say they're in Cleveland metro area. OK, obviously we don't want to look through almost 300,000 companies. 
So now we'll go up here and limit this by industry. So we'll click on industry. And there's a couple different ways to do this. Um, this uses the SIC code or NAICS code organization system. Uh, depending on the industry, sometimes SIC code may work better than the, than the NAICS code and vice versa, okay? Uh, I found in here for my particular example for skate rinks that the SIC code uh, works best, okay? So I'm gonna do an SIC keyword search and I'm gonna go in and, and search for um, skating. And here is my skating rink operation services. Okay, see how it's in 799-906. We could also go over here and see how this is kind of organized hierarchically. Here's our amusement and recreation services. Probably looks kind of familiar from like what we saw in BizMiner. Um, here's our elsewhere classified. And here we keep on going. Here's our skating rink operation services there. Okay see how it's kind of you know, continually drilled down to you find what you're looking for okay and I, I encourage you to do that because sometimes what you're what you're sh searching for may not be you know uh, what's your what's what the database calls it right so here we have shooting facilities and archery lanes okay so if I was going to open a skeet shooting place or a place that where you shoot target practice that's probably what that thing is. That, that doesn't say gun range, right? It doesn't say skeet shooting. That's what they, they're calling it right there. You got to get something that's kind of close enough to kind of identify your, um, uh, your companies by the category, okay? So sometimes it helps to browse rather than search to find what you're looking for. All right, so we'll add that to your criteria. All right, this finds 58 companies in the Cleveland MSA area, and we'll search for that, okay? All right, so now we got our 58 companies here. We could go through and just click on each one of these. Let's look at Lorraine Skate World, for example, and get information about, about these companies, okay? Uh, we could do that 58 times. That's gonna be kind of um, uh, tedious. And so I'm gonna show you a quicker way to get whatever information you want to that's available out of here, okay? So what I'm gonna do, uh, we're gonna go up here and click build files. But before we build files, we have to select which companies we want. And I'm just going to check on all. You can do up to, I think, 2,500 companies like this, so you can get a big old list of company information. And now we'll click Build Files. All right, now the, the default is kind of, it, it selects a bunch of stuff, and I don't really want that much information, so I'm gonna click Choose Fields. So I'm gonna say, let's do company name, let's do website if they have one. Uh, let's do year of founding, how long they've been in business. I think that's good to see. How, uh, how new or old my potential competitors might be, how long they've been in, in the business and in the community. Um, we can go and see, let's get our physical address. And let's look at um, primary NAICS description and we'll look at uh, primary SIC description. And just to make sure those all match up. And let's do sales and then how many employees they have and then down at the bottom, I'm skipping all this stuff because all this stuff is typically for publicly held companies. And these really are typically, my skate rinks are typically mom and pop shops. There's not gonna be a whole lot of um, financial 10K information in, in those uh, uh, skate rink um, uh, financials. So uh, let's do, um, at our executive, let's say you wanna contact maybe um, somebody uh, at the, um, and maybe get their title. Uh, somebody at the company, maybe if you have questions or um, uh, or whatnot, okay? So I'm going to go here and call this um, Skating with Chad, and we will build our files, and we can download our file here, and we can open this in Excel. Typically, it throws like a, a security error for you. It's, it's okay. It's just It's just the format of the um, of the file, and we will say yes. All right, so here's our list of 58 companies. Uh, we have some with web addresses, so we can go check them out on the web, right? Uh, we have the year of founding, like how long they've been in business. Um, so, um, uh, wow, that place has been in business in 1959. That's pretty amazing. Um, you can see uh, sales, and let's see, uh, looks like we have employees in a lot of cases, okay? So, so pretty cool, pretty cool stuff there. And our other tab here, we have a list of executives. So we have owners or um, people who 
or higher up in the in the organization who work there who are listed in the database. OK, so you can use this to reach out for questions or you can also um, use this potentially as a uh, customer calling list. So let's say you were. Um, you're, uh, you're, you're bored during the pandemic, you're sitting at home and uh, you figured out how to use your 3D printer to make um, indestructible skate bearings and and indestructible uh, roller skate brakes or something like that. Silly example, but uh, now you've got all these you know plastic pieces and no skates to put them on. So you want to sell them to somebody. This could basically give you a, a place to um, uh, to market your product to uh, to these to these companies. So basically a, a customer calling list and that sort of thing. So great way to kind of uh, get good information about the potential market. OK, you can also go through and add up the total sales in the region to get the total market volume to see how that aligns with the, the biz miner data as well. OK. All right, that's my spiel there. Um, I do want to uh, tell you that you're welcome to reach out and ask um, ask questions, make appointments, um, uh, chat with me via Teams or emails. I'm currently not online on my web chat there right now, but uh, let's see if we can um, make that happen. Let's see. So, yeah. So now I'm actually <clears throat> online to chat with me that way as well, as well. So, so let me pause real quick, see if there's any questions. Welcome to raise your hand or put them in the chat. <laughs> Anybody? Thanks, Chad. The last one was the best of the day. Well, I worked hard for that. So, <laughs> uh, Garrett's got a question, looks like. Go ahead, Garrett. Sure. Yeah. So, is there going to be a place to like find like this tutorial again? Uh, I'm going to, uh, yes, it'll be in this meeting here. As soon as I hit stop record, it should actually. Um, and you know what? I actually like this recording, so I actually may um, uh, download it and put it on my YouTube channel, then put it probably uh, um, maybe I'll, over here on the left hand side. I'll put like uh, you know, project two recorded session. How about that? So I'll yes, do that. Uh, I'll do that this afternoon. So um, bandwidth permitting and all that kind of stuff. So. I told you it was a good one. Hey, PM 105, we're going to start right after this meeting so move on over to that uh calendar invite please thank you chad sure i'm going to cease recording here and you all have the information you need for attendance